That night, inside the king's private bedroom chambers, a breeze teased the curtains of his open window. The moonlight shone brightly across the polished floor, and in the large bed, the monkey king tossed and turned and moaned in his sleep. Awaking suddenly and out of breath, he rang a service bell at the side of his bed, and a guard rushed into the chambers. Send for the alchemist at once! After a moment, a wise old orangutan entered the chamber. Oh, wise alchemist, I had the terrible dream again. He clutched his bedpost. The one where you were falling, sire. Yes, the vines, the vines. They're not strong enough for my royal weight. I keep falling and falling to a most terrible fate. It is but a dream, sire. Of course, alchemist. This I can tell. But give me one of your potions, so I may sleep well. As you command, sire. The alchemist produced a slender vial of frothy liquid from beneath his stately robe. The king drank it down in one big gulp. Now remember, speak nothing of this to anyone. To no one, O oh wise and great king. Now go, so I may sleep well. Meanwhile... Bobo and the Peddler led a small troop of monkey soldiers on the far side of a marshy lake. Bobo was exhausted and tired of the Peddler's complaints. We've had nothing but monkey chow. How I would love a burger. Look at this pile of garbage you bring. It's I who knows value. I selected the truly precious things. Bobo knelt down to wipe the sticky clod of mud from his feet as the other soldiers laughed, knowing the bonobo preferred to stay clean. Oh, you think this is easy? Well, what do you think is valuable? Why, there's nothing more valuable than a coat of shining armor, the sound of helmets clashing while blades cut the air. <laughs> yeah, a vine blade is valuable indeed. I would just like dinner, if you please. What about soft cloth? Warm tea or a seat near the fire? We swing from vines, Bobo. What use are these things to us? The monkey soldiers began to laugh loudly, hooting and hollering in the crisp evening air. They pretended they were at war and battled back and forth, leaping and bounding closer to Bobo. He tried to back away, when he was distracted by a loud squawking from below. And then Bobo caught a toe, lost his balance on the hillside, and rolled and rolled down the slippery bank and splashed into the shallow waters of the lake down below. Soaking wet, Bobo began to pick himself up and to charge back up the hill to give those soldiers a piece of his mind when he saw them. The majestic crowned cranes he was instantly transfixed by their beauty. And that's when something clicked. The laughter of the soldiers above faded away as he stalked the beautiful cranes instead. He pounced on a mating pair, grabbing them roughly by their necks. Once he had them struggling for freedom in his hands, he sounded a low note on a horn that he had had hanging from his waist. And when the other soldiers heard that note, they came bounding down the hill along with the peddler to the slippery banks of the marsh to see just what was going on. And when they saw the magnificent cranes, they looked at Bobo with a new respect and admiration.